I'm Justin Dane, and this is your weekly video rundown. Could Texas Governor Rick Perry be positioning himself for a run? Last week in the Rick Perry for President buzz began to heat up on the national scene. Various national news programs took time to mention Governor Perry and the possibility of him throwing his hat in the GOP presidential primary ring. What are his chances? If this guy runs, what's it going to be like? Um, he, he's brought jobs to the state. I mean, he's done things that are really kind of critical for someone who wants to campaign for president. Um, now, he did also call for succeeding from the United States uh, a while back. But some, there are some Republicans who say just the, that very act has doomed any chance of him running for president. But I disagree with that. I think just the mood of the nation right now, people are going to tolerate people who say things Shoot like that. So. On Tuesday, members of the Texans for Accountable Government dressed as TSA agents at the Texas Capitol and staged mock security checkpoints so lawmakers could witness what a security pat-down entails. They were supporting House Bill 1937, which failed to pass the Senate in the regular session and would have made it a misdemeanor for agents to conduct intrusive pat-downs. I think a bill like this could definitely set the precedent across the country that a state legislature is actually looking to do its job, which is protect the life, liberty, and property of the citizens of Texas. Senate Democrats managed to block the highly emotional and highly controversial Sanctuary Cities Bill, or SB 9, during the regular session. Now it has found new life in the special session. The bill would cut funding to cities that prohibit police officers from inquiring about the immigration status of any person arrested or legally detained. Wednesday, protesters rallied at the Capitol in opposition to the bill. If we lose this fight, in this special legislative session, we have to continue the struggle for justice in this state. We will not tolerate an apartheid state of Texas. SB 9 passed the Senate this week and now moves on to the House State Affairs Committee. The Texas House tentatively passed congressional redistricting plans this week. Democrats argue the plans under consideration would ensure minority voters will lack proper representation in Congress. The bill now heads to third reading, but lawmakers acknowledge this issue is likely to be settled in court. Thursday, the House approved a so-called mandate relief bill that would allow school districts to cut pay for teachers and furlough them to help schools cope with the $4 billion cut in public education. Democrats voted against the bill, while Republicans insist the measure will help school districts save jobs. It now heads back to the Senate. In more public ed news, the House stripped a proposal by Austin Representative Donna Howard that would have steered any surplus in the rainy day fund to public education. At this week's Trib Live event, Texas Tribune CEO and Editor-in-Chief Evan Smith talked with authors of the Texas Monthly's biennial Best and Worst Legislators List. Senior Executive Editor Paul Burka and Senior Editor Nate Blakesley explained why Lieutenant Governor David Dewhurst made the worst list. You know, when we Paul and I, Paul always and I for the first time, you go around and talk to the members when it's time to sit down and actually write this story. Yeah. Because, you know, Paul and I are going to get a lot of flack for who's on that worst list, but the flack really should be directed at the members' colleagues. Well, well then let me ask you directly. You talk to both Democratic and Republican members of the Senate. Yes. Both uh, Democratic and Republican members of the Senate told you put Dewhurst on the worst list. Yes. I'm Justin Dane, and that's your rundown.